in progress. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So let me remind you that we are trying to understand the geometry of the Schwarzschild metric. Um, and uh, in fact, on its extensions. Um, last time, I tried to convince you that the Eddington Finkelstein coordinates provide a certain extension. So uh, let's see. So, since I've already started writing the section number, then today we're going to talk about the Eddington, well, we already did this, the Kruskal Sekeres extension. So this is uh, on the plate today. Okay, it doesn't look to be too good. That's better. So, her sacred must have been a Kaiserliches and a Königliches uh, citizen. Uh, his paper was written in. Uh, when he was at the University of Debrecen, uh, and uh, maybe it was already after, well, it was certainly already after the war, but I, I suspect he, must, he might have been born uh, a citizen of the Habsburg dynasty. I should check that. So, um, yes, so the reminders. Uh, go as follows. Uh, the Schwarzschild metric, um, I'm not going to write it. Uh, maybe I'll need it la later, then I'll write it later. But uh, the Schwarzschild metric has a problem at r equal to m, and there are two ways to get rid uh, of this problem. The first way is to introduce a coordinate v is equal to t minus f of r, where f is... Uh, r minus 2m log r 2m minus 1. And the second way, and there's this plus here, and the second way to cure the problem is introduce uh, a coordinate which is t minus f of r. In both cases, we obtain a manifold where we can extend the variable r uh, to the full range r in zero infinity. Uh, r equals zero is a singularity, so we know that we can't do much about it. Uh, but at least we get across this point r uh, equal to m. Note that this function f doesn't make sense at r uh, uh, equal to m. In fact, it needs r louder than 2m. So we introduce these coordinates v and u in the region r louder than 2m. And we extend uh, then the metric to all, all these. And uh, now, uh, when we did that, uh, we got two extensions. And uh, one way of understanding what's happening is to, uh, has been. Uh, given to us by Mr. Kruskal and Sekeres, uh, so we make uh, a new extension, right? So, uh, uh, and this will use both the coordinate and v and u as a first step. So use u and v as coordinates. So, in other words, I'm going to write my Schwarzschild metric maybe here. G is equal minus V D. Uh, 
uh, dt, of course, and not dr. dt square plus dr square, that's an r, over v plus r square d omega square, and v is uh, 1 minus 2m over r. This is the v, and this function f is here. Um, so uh, the property, uh, the uh, defining property for f, f was f prime is 1 over 1 minus 2m over r, right? So this is how we came to this form of the metric. If we differentiate, we're going to get this. Uh, I'm not going to do the derivative now because that's how we found f. So we started with this equation and uh, decided to do this, uh, to proceed like that. So let's see. So, uh, so now if we use both u and v as coordinates, so we're going to have, uh, let's see, so should we put some numbers here? Maybe we put a number one here, two here, uh, or maybe two here, three here, four here, why not? And this is going to be five. Ah, uh, well. This is the Schwarzschild metric. I don't need a number. So uh, let's see, right? So we differentiate. Uh, we want to use u and v simultaneously on coordinates. So we will need to uh, find uh, the differentials of t and r in terms of this. So uh, let's see if we do uh, dv uh, from this equation one, this is dt plus f prime dr. And by the way, f prime is one over v. Right? That's how we came to to this. So uh, v. This is a very bad way to proceed, but let me nevertheless do this. Uh, so that's going to be v dt. Uh, plus plus dr. Uh, if we calculate v du, it's going to be the same calculation, but I only need to change the sign here, right? Because dv is t plus f and u is t minus f. So v du is v dt minus dr. So now, uh, we can probably calculate uh, wrong. So this doesn't count as an error because I've corrected it immediately. Good. So dr is easy to calculate, right? So if we add these two equations or remove one from the other, we're going to get uh, dr, right? So take this one and remove this one. Then the drs will be added. We get two drs, and these ones will be uh, dr is equal v dv minus du over 2. Uh, if I do, uh, if I add these equations, I'm going to get that vdt is equal v d, d plus du over 2, and this is an R. So I just need to put this in here. Uh, so if I calculate G, it's going to be minus V dt square. Uh, so let me just uh, 
since I have the v here, let me factor out a 1 over v minus v square dt square plus well, dr square plus r square d omega square. Well, my, this part is irrelevant for these calculations, but let's uh, keep it anyway. So we have 1 over v. Uh, v square dt square is, uh, uh, okay, so v square dv plus du square over 4. Uh, dr square is, again, a v square dv minus du square again over 4. And there is an R square d omega square. So let's see. So uh, a v square, v square 1 over v, so there is a v. There's one force, one force, there's a 4. So I've gotten rid of this, I've gotten rid of this and the squares. Now, of course, I have the signs wrong, so it uh, doesn't count because I'm correcting it. <laughs> uh, so what happens with the dv squares? dv squared from here with a minus, dv squared from here with a plus, they go away. du squares, same system. du squared from here with a minus, du squared from here with a plus, they cancel out, and the cross terms is 2 dv du with the sign, with the sign minus, and 2 dv du with the sign minus, so 4 du dv. Uh, I don't need the parentheses, but never mind, plus r squared d omega squared. Good. So, uh, did I gain anything? Not, it looks like not really, right? It looks like not really because uh, I had this 1 over v factor, which was very embarrassing. Now I don't have any 1 over v factor, so there's a little progress here. But uh, where well, I have a v factor in front, and this vanishes at r equal to m, so uh, this metric is certainly has a problem at r equals to m, right? So, so still a problem uh, at r equals to m. So we need to do something about it. But at least there is no 1 over v terms, which is may be welcome. So let's see. Uh, I need some of this formulae. Actually, I need a lot of this formulae. So uh, I probably need everything up to here. Well, let's try to work like that. I think that was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Looks like it's even worse now. Let me see if I remember how to do this properly. Good. So what is the miracle thing to do? Uh, 
Well, we're going to, uh, to write a new coordinates, right? So unfortunately, this is about changing coordinates, the whole business, but we're almost there. So uh, the new coordinates are uh, u hat is equal minus e minus cu, and v hat is e to cu with a c, which we're going to work out. And so the miracle is that if you use this, you put this in the metric, we can, we're going to find c so that the 0 at r equal to m disappears. So this is going to, to be the... So it could just be a minus sign if it's equal to the uh, It certainly could. <laughs> in fact, there, there is one. Okay, good. Thank you for catching this. Me bad. Right, so there was a, a minus from here, from the cross terms, and another minus from these cross terms, which, and of course, the force cancel out. Uh, good, so uh, it's almost the last coordinate change we're going to do. In fact, for the structure of the metric, uh, it's good enough, uh, so this will settle the problem. Uh, we'll do one last change to rotate things a little bit to for the purpose of visualization. But essentially, the problem is solved by this, right? So the, before we do the calculation, the logic is the following. Well, Mr. Eddington and Finkelstein found this nice way of getting rid of the uh, singularity at r equal to m by introducing these coordinates v and u. Uh, but there was something weird with two extensions. So now we just take both these coordinates, v and u, simultaneously, and go into these coordinates. This doesn't quite work. Last step is to make this logarithmic rescaling if you want to think about it as logarithm or exponential, right? I mean, u would be a logarithm. And, uh, and of course, this is uh, uh, terrible, terrible today. Not a good day. OK. So there's the v here, right? We're changing uh, u and v. And this was going to solve this problem of the remaining uh, 0 in this metric at r equal to m. Uh, let's see. So, well, let's just do the calculation, right? So du hat is, uh, well, we just differentiate this. There are two minuses, therefore a plus, and there is a c. Uh, e to minus cu du, uh, and uh, I can also write it as uh, c uh, if I, in terms of the u hat variable, I get minus c u hat du. Um, right? If you just replace here, and I get so I can calculate du from here. Uh, du is uh, therefore minus du hat divided by c u hat. And if I do the same calculation for v, I get dv hat is going to be now. Uh, there were two minuses which gave me a plus. Here there's a plus directly, and so it's c uh, v hat d v. And therefore, dv is d v hat over c v hat. So we put this into equation, which was probably equation 5 or something like that. Was it 5, please? Thank you very much. So into 5. We get equation six, which is the metric is V, uh, which is uh, one minus two M over R divided by 
uh, well, d or d far, dv gives me, uh, there's a minus coming from this minus here. Uh, and d u hat, dv hat, and divided by u hat, d hat, and c square plus. Um, I think the minus vanishes because we also had a minus in 5, I think. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I was wondering about this minus because I remember there is no minus. I was wondering what's going on. Good. So that's the formula. And now the point is that we can choose C so that this uh, zero vanishes. Okay. So let's just check that. So uh, I don't need five anymore. Probably want the Schwarzschild metric around. So, so now, while I'm erasing and you're bored, looking at how good I am at erasing blackboards, or light boards in this case, maybe you can just try to calculate this product, uh, u hat v hat, using the definitions and, and see what happens, right? And so to understand how to choose this. So this is the question. Can we choose C? Can we choose this constant C? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, so that the... Um, zero, which appears in this metric, uh, vanishes. So has anyone the, the value of C, which works? Of course, you can cheat and look up in my lecture notes. But So we derive it or somebody gives me the value and we check. That's, uh, Is it 1 over 4m? Yes, 1 over 4m. OK. So uh, therefore, let's try uh, 1 over 4m. And you're going to see why. Uh, or you could do the calculation without writing this value of c in and realizing that this is the right one just by doing this product. So let's see, u hat v hat. Uh, well, there's a minus. Uh, e to minus Cu, uh, E to Cv. Normally, it's uh, V minus U. And uh, V minus U, well, V is T plus F, and U is T minus F. So if I take the difference, the Ts go away, and the F gets doubled. So I get minus, just worried about the sign, but maybe that's OK. Uh, it's minus, uh, right, so minus 2f, right? So minus uh, 2cf, which is minus e to minus 2cr plus 
2m log r over 2m minus 1. Maybe I should have written things like that. Now, this term e to minus 2cr, there isn't much we can do about it. But this log term is actually not bad because exponential of a log is the function. So uh, we get e to minus 2c, uh, it's 4cm. And maybe you start seeing why 1 over 4m is the thing you want. Uh, and this log term. And now this thing is, uh, remember i is larger than 2m here. That's already been assumed. So uh, x of log is just the function and to a certain power here, right? r2m minus 1 uh, to power, right? If you didn't have that, that would be just 1 over. Well, if you just didn't didn't have this whole negative thing, would be just this, and you have a power for cm. Right? Doesn't work, right? Because I did something wrong here. Oh, gosh. Because uh, the metric was, uh, yeah, it's going to be a disaster today. I feel it. I wrote this, this metric, which was here. Uh, there was a v in front, but there should have been 1 over v. Right? Because I factored, yeah, to get v squared dt squared, I factored 1 over v. So this should be uh, to minus 1. So I don't know what happened with 6, but with the, the uh, 5, but 5 should be um, 1 over v, not v. Right? So please uh, correct this. It's not very helpful, I know. But, uh, well. Right, so, so, so this g should have 1 over v, right? Please uh, cross-check the calculations you had, but... Uh, Uh, I hope that this is so, so okay, so uh, when we, uh, let's see if, if it works with minus one. Uh, it's a little embarrassing, but uh, uh, it's not unusual for me, so this is uh, uh, embarrassing, but not unusual. So uh, C1 over 4M, then we're going to get here E to minus 2CR divided by R over 2M minus 1, and the minus sign here. Right. So this is u hat No. I think it was fine without it. It was fine. Then you just correct the fraction. Well, I don't know about this one. But here, what? OK, I, I know what the. The mistake is here, right? Because it's uh, plus to CF. Okay, right? So we take V minus U, we get plus to CF and not minus to CF. Okay, so that this is, this is like that. Good.
OK, so this is a formula that we're going to need. Uh, so let me just copy it. Uh, this is going to be our equation 7, which is u hat v hat is equal minus e to minus c being 1 over 4m. It's r over 2m times r 2m minus 1. OK? So So, so, so here was actually correct. Yeah, good. So, well, not that good, but. The mistake is it already up there where you inserted f as r plus 2m. If it's still there, there should be another in the fourth line. Yeah, more on the right. No, yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, here should be a minus. No, it's a plus here. No, no, f is, oh, here is a plus. No. Yeah. Good, okay. Mm. So that, that was a mistake here. Okay. Uh, the, 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 this comes with a plus. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, so this does not go to on YouTube, right, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the laughing stock of all my colleagues. Good. Well, this one is correct. So that's good. And this one, uh, I, I think, is correct. So, yeah. Good. So let's just erase this. Uh, we have this product here. Good. So, uh, so we go back into six. So seven into six. We get that g is uh, r minus two m over r. Uh, we get c square, which is four m square. Does C go here or up? Because my memory of this, this M's, they should go down. Okay, maybe, oh, maybe they're up. Okay, good. So uh, U hat V hat. U hat V hat is, uh, there's a minus. And uh, because it's in the denominator, this guy, I can write it up with I e to r over 2m. And, uh, and this guy is uh, r over 2m minus 1, r over 2m minus 1. So uh, this will cancel this. One, if we multiply by 2m, so I have to multiply down and up by 2m. 
So I get, so, okay, so this one, we cancel this one by leaves at 2m in addition. So we get 4 square 32m cube over r e to r over 2m d u hat d v hat and I don't shouldn't forget the minus d v hat plus r square d omega square well let me check if the formula is Correct, I think it is, uh, but at least just not to be embarrassed. Um, once again, I have the sign wrong here. How come I have a sign wrong? Of course, because this, this sign was plus as well, right? So this sign here was a plus. I, I, I corrected the, the sign here, but I didn't correct this one. Okay. We'll get there. Uh, so now we have the, the metric in the Cruz called Sekeres coordinates. So this is going to be our equation eight. Now this is regular. So now let's see. So the coordinates now are, are R. No. The coordinates are U hat, V hat, and well, theta phi. So what is R? Uh, well, R is a function uh, uh, of u and uh, of u hat and v hat, right? A function of u hat v hat, and uh, it's a bit of a complicated function because you have to invert this equation, right? So what we need to do is invert 7 and the question is can we do this? Right? So, so we have a function, well this one is uh, the product of u hat v hat, so in fact r would be if we can invert this equation then R would be a function of u hat v hat, right? So, in fact, R is a function of the product. Uh, so, how can we make sure that uh, this function be, can be inverted and at what range? Right? What is the range at which this can be inverted? So, let's try to figure this out. Uh, I probably don't need this anymore. I still need these equations, maybe. So let me just copy them here. U hat is minus e to c u and v hat is e to c v. Um, good, so all this can go. Well, so uh, when you have an implicit equation like that, there's a wonderful, uh, there are tools to study this. Well, first, the, the easiest one is monotonicity. Right? If you have a function which is monoton, monoton uh, on intervals, then it is invertible. So if we check monotonicity, we'll know that this is invertible. Uh, 
And to check monotonicity, the simplest way to proceed is just to use the um, in, in, implicit function theorem. So try to see if the derivative has a sign, right? So, so that's what we're going to do. So maybe we write the equation seven uh, 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 so uv is equal mm, well say g of r let's keep this sign yeah g of r where the function g of r is equal minus e r over two m r to m minus 1. And the question is, uh, g monotonous, g, is g uh, monotonous? Are they increasing or increasing, decreasing? I would guess it's probably, I hope that I have the signs right here, but uh, uh, yeah, I think that uh, uh, does g prime have a positive uh, or negative? Well, let's check that. Then uh, g prime is, and, and the reason we're asking this is the implicit function theorem, right? So implicit function theorem. Uh, so let's see. So there's a minus here, and we're differentiating this exponent. So it's going to, well, first, there's certainly going to be a term e to r over 2m. And then when I differentiate the exponent, I'm going to get 1 over 2m. Whatever was here. And then, so this is a product, right? So the first term gives me this. And the second will going to give me minus e to r over 2m, which I already have, times the derivative of this one, which is plus 1 over 2m. So uh, these uh, things cancel out nicely. Uh, this is positive, uh, and this is positive if r is positive. So this is uh, minus e to 4 over 2m divided by 2m squared times r, which is negative. This is positive, this is positive, this is negative, if r is positive. And that's, of course, the region we're interested in. And we already know that we cannot cross r equals 0 anyway. So g prime is decreasing. g prime monotonously decreasing, so invertible. Monotonously. Monoton. Well, if it's uh, yeah, if it's increasing, it's monotonously increasing. So it's uh, strictly strictly de decreasing, right? strictly decreasing, strictly decreasing. So what does it mean? It means that if we take uh, so this sign is annoying, right? But so this is decreasing. Uh, and let's see, at r equals 0, then this is the same as uh, this is, this vanishes. Minus minus becomes plus. 
and e to 0 is 0. So u hat v hat is minus 1. And uh, if r tends to infinity, then this goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, so the product goes to minus infinity, right? So u hat v hat goes to minus infinity. Plus one, not minus one. R equals zero. I get zero here, one here, and minus minus gives me a plus. Okay? So G is a bijection uh, between minus infinity one and, uh, and um, zero infinity. I need this, I need this, I need, I need everything. Uh, maybe the trick is just to copy 8, so, and then uh, I can erase everything else. So let me first erase things that I don't need here. Well, I think you have to remember this one, or maybe I, I got r equals 0, then u hat v hat is equal 1. Maybe we can also do r equal to m, u hat v hat is 0. And r goes to infinity, u hat v hat goes to minus infinity. Good. So then I can get rid of this and So let me copy uh, 8. Oh, actually, before I, I do 8, so uh, conclusion, we have coordinates u hat v hat. They have a metric uh, which takes this form. R is an implicit function of, of this product of u hat v hat. And the ranges are that u hat v hat is 1, r is 0. u hat v hat is 0, r is 2m u hat v hat goes to minus infinity, then r goes to infinity. So this means that, of course, then these, this should be in uh, minus infinity 1, right? Uh, so the uvs have the property, well, not the, uh, that this should be in minus infinity 1, but the product, right? So the only restriction now is that the product of u hat v hat is in this range. And uh, so I could stop here and say, well, this is our metric, and that's, that's where it is defined. Uh, but to understand this geometry, it's better to make a rotation by introducing uh, coordinates in which we are a little more familiar than these ones. So these, these uh, uh, somehow, we like the Minkowski metric, which is written as minus dt squared plus dr square and so forth. And here rather, we, so it's not diagonal, it's just purely off diagonal this term. So to diagonalize this, we're going to write, uh, and this is the last change of coordinates we're going to do. 
Uh, so we're going to write uh, a capital U, U and, well, actually, capital T and capital X, just to be uh, to have the same notation as in the nodes. Um, so we're going to write capital X is equal V hat minus U hat over 2. And capital T is V hat plus U hat over 2. And if, th if you think about it, it's only a, a rotation of the plane, right? So we're rotating the UV plane. Uh, and the advantage is that this, this part, d u hat dv hat, is going to be um, a little simpler. Uh, so uh, we can we can invert this and write v hat is if I add these two guys I'm going to get x plus t and if I take t minus x I'm going to get u hat. Right? If I just take this one minus this one, then u hats add, the one halves become a one, and the v hats cancel. And therefore, dv du hat dv hat is dx plus dt times dx. Uh, dt minus dx well whatever the order uh, I should have written it the other way around this is du hat and this is dv hat so it gives me and let me throw in the, the minus ah, okay so this gives me a dt square minus dx square. And so finally, if I put this into 8, I'm going to get that d is equal. Well, this one, I we have no choice. It is there, 32m cube, e to r minus 2m, some stupid function of r, which is well behaved except at r equals 0. And the minus, I can absorb it into here. <laughs> Terrible. So I absorb it into here, but then I don't need it here. Let me do it right. And so what I have gained is that I have a metric which looks now obviously well behaved, right? So here you could say, well, it's kind of a off diagonal. What do I know? Well, now I have a diagonal metric. Uh, the signature is certainly minus plus plus plus. Uh, everything is smooth if R is positive. And uh, um, that's it, right? So this is equation nine here. So, so this is the kruskal sekeres extension of the um, Schwarzschild metric in a manifestly well-behaved form. Now, let's try to understand, uh, to make a picture here. In particular, we want to understand these ranges of variables. So for this... 
I'm going to draw a picture and let's try to see what, what is the, the, the set on which these coordinates are defined. So, is there a question? Can you still hear me? Everything's working fine? Okay. Uh, just a strange noise, but okay. Uh, let's see. So, so, let's draw the T and X plane. Something which is easy to understand is r equal to m. Then we already know that this is u v equals 0. Well, if we take the product u v, then this is, so we, we need to take the product of those. So we get t squared minus x squared equals 0. Right? If I just take the product here. It's t minus x, t plus x. So this is the same as t is equal plus minus x. So this is uh, uh, r equal to m. Um, well, let me do it in. You probably won't see the colors, will you? Uh, we'll see if we can make it doing colors. So r equal to m is. And these are the, this is the event horizon. And actually, we see that there's, uh, there's two of them now. Right? Before, we had a set r equal to m in the eddington fickelstein coordinates. There was only one of them. Now we have two of them. And you probably don't see this. So this red, I shouldn't use it. Let me try another red. Not much better. OK, so these are the event horizons. Uh, what about uh, r equals 0, right? r equals 0. So this is uh, this means that this product is one, but this product is we've just seen uh, t square minus x square equal one, which is the same as t is equal Uh, equal plus minus square root of 1 plus x square, which is a nice hyperbola. This is 1, these two sheets, 
it's minus 1. So this is r equals 0. Here. Uh, now, so the set that we're interested in is that u hat v hat should be smaller than 1, right? So u hat v hat smaller than 1. because it goes from minus infinity uh, uh, to 1. Uh, so it should be smaller, right? So uh, where is it smaller than 1? So here it's 0, for example, right? So here it's 0. Uh, so certainly this is this region between uh, these two hyperbole. Um, Right, so this is uh, then uh, the set we're looking at. So this is where the metric lives here, right? So 8 is C infinity, uh, well defined. In this region here. Good. So. Uh, now here r is 0, here r is 2m, so r larger than 2m is either here or there, right? So here we have r larger than 2m. So now in this manifold we get something which is even more weird, then we have now two regions r equal to m, right? So, so now, so two, two horizons r equal to m, one going this way, one going that way, and two regions are louder than 2m. And remember we started with one, right? We started with 1, and uh, we started uh, with this equation uh, with u and v, whatever they were. So v hat should be positive, and u hat should be negative. And if you uh, look at this equation, uh, this equation makes sense here. Right? So this equation makes sense in this region. And I'm running out of colors, and probably we're not going to see anything, so maybe you want to make another picture. But this is uh, our world. So our world is here. Uh, in this region, r larger than 2m. Right? So this is where this equation makes sense. Yeah, so I, let me not, just not scribble anymore here, but uh, you can think of this as being a gray region between these two horizons. Yeah. Now, where is the, where are the Eddington-Finkelstein extensions? So, uh, how are we doing with time? Do we have time to do this now or not? Um, actually, we still have uh, a while. So, uh, so let me not write on this anymore, but uh, erase here and do another drawing so that we still can see something. Uh, gosh, I didn't want 9 to disappear, but... Perhaps we don't need it anymore.
good. So we had a formula for uh, u hat and t hat, which I erased, and I don't want to erase them. Uh, so x was v hat minus u hat over 2. T was v hat plus u hat over 2. Uh, then, uh, well, if we need to invert them, we do. So, uh, so let's see. So here we have this picture. I repeat this one here. It's a T here. T x uh, the hyperbola, and this is region one. This is region two. This is region. Uh, let me call this two, three, and four. Okay. So there are all four regions in this uh, picture, separated by these uh, hypersurfaces, which are called event horizons, and. Um, Yes, how can we, uh, what can we say about these regions? Uh, well, first the question, where is uh, the first, the, V, R, theta phi, Eddington, Finkelstein extension. So we know that um, the uh, what, what was the formula for for the uh, for this extension? We just wrote v is equal uh, t plus f, and this was in R, right? So this was in R. Uh, then if I do v hat is obviously positive there, right? So v hat is positive. <coughs> but what was v, v hat? V hat was uh, x plus t. Right? So if we add x plus t is positive, which means that x is smaller than x is larger than minus t, or t is larger than minus x, right? So maybe if we think about graphs, t is minus t is larger than minus x. Uh, this is this is t equal minus x. So this is the region here, right? So uh, this uh, Eddington Finkelstein extension corresponds to the region above the descending diagonal. Right? So, so this is region 1 and 2 and the event horizon, OK? So what we did in the Eden Finkelstein case that we just found half of the kruskal sekeres manifold. We didn't find all of it. We just found a piece. So let's repeat the same uh, question for the UR theta phi extension. Well, on the, the, in that case, we just wrote u is equal t minus f. And this was taking all possible values in R, which means that u hat is negative. Uh, 
Well, u hat, u hat is t minus x, right? t minus x negative, t smaller than x. t equal x is here. So it means that we are under the diagonal. Right? We are under the diagonal. So this is region one and four. So these are different regions in this set. And now it explains why we did find two extensions, right? So these two extensions that we had before are distinct. One is this part of the kruskal sikoris diagram. The other one is this one. And to get a whole picture, we need to add another region here, right? This region three. And this region three I think I have no choice, but I have to erase this. Is a copy, another copy of, of our universe. Another copy of, our, of the exterior region. And in fact, isometric. So in this sense, it's a, well, of course, in terms of coordinates, that's a different, another copy, but you just make the, um, because we are adding exactly the same stuff. Um, but it's more than just adding twice a copy of our universe. Uh, because this, this region is actually identical to ours. So uh, the region three is isometric uh, to one. And this means that there is a map which take, goes from one to three, which is a diffeomorphism, uh, so that which preserves the metric, and so the map, uh, uh, which the isometry is u and v goes to minus u minus v. Then, indeed, this is an isometry. Uh, well, du. Well, actually, du hat is equal minus du hat. dv hat is minus d. Well, actually, well, that, that would be maybe even simpler. Tx goes to minus t minus x. That's why should I make things complicated? What I wrote was correct, but. So t hat x, uh, t, capital X, capital T, or capital T, capital X goes to minus T minus X. Then dt square goes to 
minus dt squared, which is the same. Same for dx, right? So if you change the sign, you get minus dx squared, which is the same. So certainly, uh, my metric vanished now. Well, it vanished, but uh, so if you just look at the metric, that was the important part. And now the important thing is that r was a function uh, of the product and uh, if we change the sign uh, and this map, uh, if I call star, and star is the same as uh, u v goes to minus u minus v, so the product remains unchanged. Uh, that this is too low, remains. unchanged. So R remains unchanged. R does not change. Hmm. What else could we could we say here? So we have a black hole region. Uh, that's the first eddington fickenstein extension. We have a, so this is the black hole, right? This region we cannot get outside. Now the map t goes to minus t is also an isometry of this metric. So obviously 2 is uh, isometric to 4, so I didn't, uh, it's the same Principle is it? Uh, yeah. So what happens if t goes to minus t? Um, yes. Is it clear that uh, the product u v doesn't? Right. Okay. T t goes to minus t is not an isometry. But uh, if we make this uh, uh, this isometry minus t minus x, right? So points here from one one and three are in bijection between this map, but also 2 and 4 are in bijection in this map. Therefore, these things are isometrics. So you have the same geometry here, except that when you're doing this map, you're changing time orientation because t goes to minus t. Right? So curves which are going to the future now are going to the past. So what 4 is, 4 is a image, an isometric image of a black hole region under change of time orientation, which means that you can exit from this region by causal curves, but you cannot come back. Right? So going from here to here means a time orientation, a curve which was future directed and enters the black hole region. If I do the change of time orientation, it remains a causal curve, but now it becomes past-oriented, which means that you can, before you could enter the black hole, but you couldn't exit here. Now, if you change the time orientation, it means that you can exit the black hole, but you cannot re-enter it. So this is the white hole region. 4 is called the white hole region. And the uh, Eddington-Finkelstein extension uh, with... Uh, using the coordinate u, produces a white hole and not a black hole. This is, so 2 is a black hole, 4 is a white hole, uh, t equal x is a black hole event horizon, t equal minus x is a uh, white hole event horizon. Right? So this is a white hole. A white hole is the 
time reverse of a black hole. So here you have a black hole. This is a black hole event horizon. And this is a white hole event horizon. Uh, well, we can try to visualize the surfaces uh, t equal constant uh, on this uh, uh, on this picture here. So let's uh, yeah we still have uh, a few minutes, so that's uh, one thing we can do. Well, this microphone keeps falling off, which is a bit annoying. I don't know why it does that, but somehow it likes to fall off. That's, uh, OK, maybe it should be better now. Uh, let's see. So uh, the next question, uh, t equal constant. Uh, let's see. So if we go to star, uh, and if we look at v hat divided by u hat, then this is going to be minus e to c v uh, divided by e to minus u, so it's minus e to c v minus u, and minus uh, v minus u uh, plus u. OK, that's the point, plus u. And if I take v plus u, you get 2t. Right? So this is e minus e to 2t. Uh, two CT. Okay. So T equal constant is the same as uh, V hat over U hat is a constant, right? So V hat over U hat is a constant. So this is the same as um, a straight line in the u hat v hat plane. Which is the same? Well, actually half line, uh, because it has a sign here, uh, constant negative which is the same as straight half line in the TX plane. Right, because this is a linear map, right? So the map which goes from the U hat V hat coordinates is a linear map uh, to the TX coordinates. So uh, uh, so if you are in our world, then you know that you are in this region then 
these are constant t. So they do something funny. They kind of accumulate at this point where the black hole and the event uh, and the white hole event horizons meet. Uh, if we look at r equal constant, well, we already know this, right? That the, the product u, u hat v hat is a constant. Uh, is a constant. So these are uh, hyperbola. But of course, u hat v hat is equal constant. Uh, now, if r is louder than 2m, uh, this is negative if r is louder than 2m. And you had v hat. We already know what it was uh, in terms of the t and x coordinates. So let, let me do this calculation again. Uh, u hat was t minus x, right, t minus x, and v hat was uh, t plus x. So u hat, v hat is the same as um, t square minus x square. And so these are hyperbolic. Well, hyperbolic and of course the, the diagonals, right? So I'm not going to, well, actually I'm going to because, <laughs> well, hopefully we'll be able to see something here still right so this would be r equal constant uh, what else could we say about this metric I think it's probably good enough for today two minutes left so uh, it's a good place to stop summarizing we start with Schwarzschild. There is a problem at r equals zero, singularity, nothing we can do. Well, r equal to m. We can introduce Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, and they're going to give us part and an extension. Either the v coordinate gives us this part of this manifold, or the u coordinate gives us this part of the manifold. Uh, since this is actually now the complete picture, obviously the previous ones were not complete, right? So we need to do better, and doing better is the Eddington, uh, is the Kruskal Sekeres extension, where we use both first u and v coordinates, then make an exponential change of coordinates, and just to get this picture, we make a rotation of the plane, right? This is a rotation. Uh, it's, uh, if you think about this picture in the terms of VU coordinates, it's going to be a rotation by 45 degrees. Don't ask me whether it's to the right or to the left, but that's nothing else. Uh, well, a rotation and a scaling. So, uh, so we, we introduce, so we go to UV coordinates, make a, an exponential rescaling, and extend, and this extends to a metric which is smoothly defined on this portion of the plane. Uh, the singularities R is zero, R two hyperbole, and uh, we have two event horizons, a uh, black hole event horizon, white hole event horizon, a black hole region, a white hole region, our universe we started with, and another copy which we get for free. Now this is the Kruskal-Sekeres extension, and 
I'd be happy to answer any questions. Nothing to ask? Good. So uh, then, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. See you then. Bye.